Hello, I'm James Smith from For Nature. Today we're looking at a video of a bit of a different kind. Usually we're talking about wildlife boxes, but today we're talking about a renovation that I did to my house um, to attract bats or make a space for bats in the roof. I moved in here about four years ago and after living here and working out some of the renovations that were required, we had to completely re-roof the house. Um, it was leaking in several spots and it was only on a 10 degree angle and I have seven large eucalypts which sort of overhang the roof. So the old roof was removed and a new roof was placed on and in the process we increased the angle from that 10 degrees to 25 degrees so all the eucalypt leaves could be shed. That left a significant space in the, in the roof cavity or the loft um, and at the very northwestern end which is the end of the property we're at I thought that would be an ideal location to install a bat condominium. Now the sort of space that the bat condominium is for is for small microbats. Uh, there are more than 70 species of microbats found across Australia. Um, in the southern part of Australia where I live we have nine species locally and so a range of habitats has been made within the box and then the the tin the roof the rest of it was built around that up as you can see on the side of the house around about here is the entrance to the box uh, which opens up and into the condominium itself let's go in and check it out so we've made our uh, way up to the roof space here we are, I'm sitting on one of the support members uh, for when the trusses were put in in the first place. Here is um, one of the trusses, uh, the far end truss is the other side of the condominium and in between we have the bat condo and as you can see it's really quite a large structure. There's only a few things we can see from the outside here. Firstly, that it is all really well sealed, we want the bats within the bat condominium, what we don't want is the bats in the roof space. We'd rather isolate them and have them where we planned. The other thing is these small ventilation holes which have been covered so nothing can get in, nothing can get out, but I'll tell you more about that once we get inside. So why don't we head inside uh, the condo and see what sort of accommodation we have for the bats. So now we're inside the bat condominium or large bat box and we developed it probably over about 18 months. We got the structure in first, so it's about uh, 2.4 metres long by about 1.2 metres wide. It is also probably about a metre and a half high at its highest point, so quite a large space. And there are three different types of roosting arrangements. The first is the hessian, and we have hessian hanging on the sides here and certain bats like to hang off or crawl in and nestle within that, certain micro bats. Uh, we also have the cavity structures here where they create narrow crevices and some of our bats like our southern free tail bats like to get back into those crevices and jam themselves in so they feel safe and will explore or exploit those habitats. And thirdly, we have some rough hewn rafters that were recycled from when we took the roof down and put in here that run across the top and some bats can just hang by roosting from those sorts of locations. In addition to those uh, three different roosting uh, areas, we have this hauler rope which comes from the entrance. So we saw the entrance outside. This is the narrow entrance inside. All of the bats we're talking about are really small bats. The smallest um, is around three grams. Uh, the largest goes up to somewhere between 30 and 60 grams, but many of them are somewhere around the, the 15 gram mark or so. And if we think about a mouse that is about 25 grams, most of these things are smaller than mice. So incredible animals. Uh, they can crawl around using the hauler rope. It takes to all of the different roosting locations or they can fly around within this space. So it was intentionally created for that extra area. In addition to that, we have in the back corner, uh, we can see a video camera. I've put in two video surveillance cameras to monitor the activity here within the space, one in the back wall and one in the front wall that points up to the entrance, so very quickly we'll be able to determine what is in here and what is using the space. 
In addition, again, you can see across the back wall, but all around the box are ventilation holes. This was positioned on the northwest side of the house, which is going to get very hot. Uh, we want, and bats want to get warm, uh, particularly before they fly out to feed in the night. So that's ideal, but we don't want them to get over hot. So those ventilation holes will hopefully keep the temperature hot without being too hot. Up until now, the entrance to this box has been sealed. We haven't until it's finished, and it was only finished um, last week. We installed the security cameras last week, so it was only finished then. We didn't want bats in here, so people will, would be interacting with them. As of this week, we're going to remove the seal to the entrance. I'm also going to paint that entrance with a slurry of bat droppings, so they'll be able to smell that and hopefully be attracted in there and in a very short space of time, we're hoping this uh, bat condominium is going to be populated by a number of different species of bats. So watch this space, we'll keep you updated uh, as and when we get any more wildlife that uses it on the YouTube channel, on Facebook, and thank you for watching.